Hi everyone, good evening. I know we're almost to nine o'clock tonight. Lord have mercy. Good evening, you guys. And also good evening to anyone who's catching this back on the replay on either Facebook or YouTube. We're on two different platforms. My name is Anastasia. How are you guys doing? And we are live this evening talking about the keys of the kingdom. Can y'all hear me okay? Let me know. Let's see, turn up just a little bit more. Okay. So I hope you guys can hear me. I hope you guys have had a blessed weekend, a blessed Sunday. Um, I just was pulled to come on and just to talk to you guys about um, your response, about how it's your responsibility on how you respond to the enemy's um, tactics, to his schemes to his tricks to his wiles okay um it's our it's our responsibility um i come to you with a story of how my week has been it is i'm, I'm just gonna keep it real on here okay it has not been the best okay i you know the enemy tried to i heard one person say and it makes so much sense hijack me okay hijack my joy hijack my spirit hijack my uh, my peace. Oh my God. Like if we can just keep it real on here, it's been, it, I, I'm going through a test. Okay. But one thing we have to understand and know that when we read this word, God gives us, he lets us know where our fight is. Okay. He lets us know where our fight is. Okay. And it's not with these. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Back then, I could throw these things, okay? And I still can if I, if need be, if, if I feel in any way that I'm being threatened, okay? <laughs> if I can't run <laughs> or uh, talk my way out of something, okay? But this is not the way that God wants us to fight, okay? He's telling us that our fight is in his word. Our fight, especially in Ephesians chapter six, that's where our fight is, right? And oh my God, I was tested in that area all week, especially this past Friday. I'm just, I'm just, I, I you know, I was tested. Let's just say that I was tested. And it's like, you know, you go through and you deal with so much because with this certain situation, I, you know, I knew it was a devil from the beginning. Okay. I knew it was a devil. And all through, it was like, I was putting on my full armor but it's like this time from months past, almost a year past, it has been a year past, the devil knew that I did not have my full armor on, okay? And he knew, he knew exactly what, but what buttons to push for an attack, right? So we're going to talk about the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys of the kingdom of God. What are the keys? Just like this title says, the keys of the kingdom, what are they and how do you use them? OK, so it's going to be part one, because even though I have a list here, but there are still more. OK, there are more like the ones I didn't even consider as keys of the kingdom. OK, so we're going to go with the fruits of the spirit and the armor of God. OK, which they do correlate together. They come together. They are similar, you know, to to, you know, um, one another, um, the armor of God and also the keys of the kingdom. So when we read those, you know, it can not really put a question in our head, but how, how are they similar? You know, how are they similar? And so I'm going to at least, I'm going to try to stay on at least for like 30 minutes to talk about the fruits of the spirit and the whole armor of God. I may not even get to the armor, armor of God, you know, because it's, it's, 
it's, you know, it's not just something you can just scan through and then that's it. No. So I may probably get to the half, you know, the fruits of the spirits talking about that in Galatians five. But then, you know, after that 30 minutes, we'll go on to part two, maybe tomorrow morning. So I'm going to pray and then um, we'll get started. Father God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for your peace, your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, I thank you that whatever we need, you already know what it is and that you're working. Even if we don't see it, if it doesn't seem like it, but God, I thank you for working it out. I thank you, Lord, for having your way, God. I thank you, Lord, for understanding and Father, your your word that is true, that guides us and leads us, and by your Holy Spirit, Father, that dwells in us, and not going off of our own understanding and leaning to our own, our own understanding, but only to your understanding, your heart, and your mind, and your hand. We thank you, Lord, in all things. Thank you, Lord, for the fruits of the Spirit and the keys of the kingdom, God, that, Father, we know, Lord Jesus, that Father, we have to stay strong in order to keep them, God. We cannot lose our healing. So we thank you, Father, for the instruction of life. And we thank you, Father, for what you are doing and what you're going to do in each life. We thank you for every ear that is tuned in th this evening, that tonight. We thank you, Father, for, for it all. We love you in all things. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. So again welcome <laughs> we're both on youtube on save sex not safe sex and also my uh personal facebook page and uh, again as you all know if you're new here <clears throat> welcome my name is anastasia and um and i welcome you i welcome you so thank you all for being here thank you thank you thank you uh, let's see. Okay, yes. We're talking about the fruits of the spirit first. That's first. You all know that Satan, he is on a rampage. You know, like one minister told me here um, maybe a couple weeks ago that the enemy knows, the devil knows he has little time. So he is on a rampage. He is revving it up. Right. It's like you rev up a car. He's revving it up. How you push the gas, you know, on a car and rev up the motor. He's revving it up. So we should rev it up more, more and more higher, more and more. Right. With, ele with elevation, we should rev it up in God. Amen. Because he knows he has little time. He knows that. And so he is trying to take out as many of us, as many of us in the kingdom, as many of us in God. He's trying to take as many of us out as he can right you know, I, you know a lot of people i know you know a lot of us we believe that you know i'm in christ and you know and it's good to believe that it's good to have confidence in that you know keep that confidence you know and keep that mindset because the thing is is that you know the enemy wants to lock up our gifts he wants to lock up the fruits he wants to lock up the keys so that we will not we won't have anything to fight back with we won't know where our fight is we won't know where oh thank you we won't know um how to operate or how to respond right and that's basically the the situation and the mindset that i was in on friday i I, I completely forgot. That's how the enemy had my mind. I completely forgot how to respond back to that thing, you know, and I just got, I got teed off. Let me tell you, it was like, like I was saying through the whole year, I had been putting up with them, putting up with them, putting up with this certain person. And, you know, it was just like, you know, he, you know, this person just wouldn't stop, you know. And I'm praying and I'm trying to do everything that's right. I was doing everything that was right. And it was like, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person I don't lay down. You know, I don't lay down. I don't, you know, take, you know, mess up. With them. God didn't raise, you know, he, he, our mothers didn't raise no punk. God does not, he's the, he does not, you know, elevate punks. Okay. He does not, you know, that's why he told us, yeah, he, he lets us know where's your fight. 
I gave you your fight in the word. I gave you your fight in my truth. I gave you your fight with these weapons, with the 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 you know the the the, the fruit of the spirit and the armor of, of God. I gave you the fight. You know, we're not punks. You know, when it comes to that enemy, do not be a punk when it comes to him. You can't. You know, he's not playing with us. We can't be playing with him and diddle daddling and patticating and playing patticating and all that kind of stuff with him. We can't do that. You know, so. You know, and but it's just like I I I got weary in my spirit. I mean, can we be real? You know, I got weary, I got weary in spirit, weary in mind. And man, I was teed off. I was teed off, you know. And you know, it's like stuff like that. It's just like my dear friend, he sent me a scripture of John 316 and Revelation 316. And I when I read both of them. Although I had to reread it over and over to really get a good understanding and comprehension of what it was saying. But I finally, God finally brought to me that, you know, because just like it says in 316, I'm going to read it real quick. It says in 316, it says, John 316, rather. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Those who believe in him, remember that part, those who believe in him shall have eternal life. They shall not perish, but have eternal life. Revelation 3 and 16, it says, it's talking to the, the Laodicea church. It says, so because you are Luke warm you're neither hot or cold you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold i am about to spit you out of my mouth you say i am rich i have acquired wealth this is verse 17 and do not need a thing these people are saying i, I don't need anything i don't need god i don't but christ is saying but you do not realize that you are wretched pitiful poor blind and naked You are all of those things. Ain't that something? So I saw the similarity in these two scriptures. Okay. We don't carry the heat of God. If we don't carry the heat of his son, we don't carry the heat of the Holy Ghost. Right? God is going to consider, consider us neither hot nor cold. We don't carry the heat. It's just like if you go down, <clears throat> if you go down into a basement. You know, what, what are we interposing into our sphere? Because if you go down into a basement and you see all that thick, look like, you know, the insulation they put within the walls to keep the cold and whatever element of the outside out. Okay. If that, if that insulation is not there, the heat, the heat goes out. Cold comes in, right? So we have to keep the heat. God wants us with the heat. Amen. And it is so easy. This is why we, you know, I, I'm a minister, okay? I'm a minister and I'm also a Christian counselor for single women. And this is why my platform is called Save Sex, Not Safe Sex. Save Sex, Not Safe Sex. We're not playing it safe, okay? That's why it's called that because, you know, I counsel some women who are single. I counsel some women who are trying to save themselves. And it's a struggle. It's a struggle for me. Come on, I'm in the same boat. It's a struggle. So while we're in this struggle, even though we, you know, we're, we, we suffer, and when the word it says we will suffer for Christ, but only for a little while, you know, it's a struggle, but we have to keep the heat. We have to keep the heat, keep the heat of God, right? And so the fruit of the spirit, which we're going to go through, the fruit of the spirit, the armor of God, the gift of the spirit, amen, is going to help us fight. This is our weapon. This is our weapon for warfare. Our weapons are not carnal. They're mighty, amen. So this is our fight, right? So we can't be neither, we can't straddle the fence, Mm -hmm. We have to be either hot or cold, right? So, 
And this is how Satan is trying to steal the word in that's Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, when it's talking about, uh, no, this is Mark. Okay. So both gospels, both, both gospels talk about the sower and they talk about the, um, how Satan comes in when the sower sows the word and then Satan comes in and steals the word, right? And trials come and the cares of the world chokes the word. Come on, you know? Oh my God. Oh Lord. Says when they hear it, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Man. And, and a lot of times that happens when we crumble, when we when we crumble, when we collapse under pressure, right? This is why us women, we're called a diamond because we had to, you know, life had to pressure us. It has to pressure us. It has to crush us. Come on. That's why we're called a diamond. You know, our worth is far. Our worth is, is above rubies. Come on. You have to be crushed in this life. Just like a grape. And olive, you have to be crushed, pressed in order for the oil to come down. That anointing that you have on you, the anointing that I have on me, we, come on, it didn't just get there, right? We had to go through something in order to be anointed, right? And we understand what that carries is heavy. It's a heavy mantle. It's not for the weak. You know, okay. So Satan, he did, you know, this is what God is bringing to us. Satan wants to steal our gifts, right? And what are the gifts? Let's go to first. We're talking about the fruits of the spirit. Galatians. Five. And 22. And these are basically like the reflection of the character of God. So these are the gifts. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I love verse 16 of chapter 5. It says, so I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So the flesh and the spirit are constantly at war, constantly at war. And like you just said, the flesh is contrary. The desires of the flesh is contrary to the spirit and the, 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 the desires of the spirit. The spirit is contrary to the desires of the flesh, right? They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. We can't do that. We can't do whatever we want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Thank God we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. Amen. So it says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Right. Idolatry is is loving or putting all your cares and love and, and things into something other than God. You're putting that before him. Right. So this is this may um, it may answer a question or bring to light on why we don't want to spend time with him sometimes. But we're putting other things before him. What is standing before God that's making you not want to spend time with him? Right. Hatred, discord, discord, and jealousy, excuse me, fits of rage, <clears throat> selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, Paul is warning, warning the people, the Galatians, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Just like you said in the verse before, 
We cannot do what we want. We can't do whatever that we want. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is first love. It's first love. Amen. Let me see here. In Mark 12, 30 through 31, it says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul. Are we loving God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, with all of our heart? Making sure there's no deceit because you know that, that the heart is, is, is deceitful. But there's no deceit. There's no uncleanness. There's no hatred. There's no malice. Our soul is clean. Our mind, is not, it doesn't have any filthy thoughts. It doesn't have any thoughts to do wrong. It doesn't have any thoughts to get revenge. It doesn't. I mean, are we really loving the Lord with all of our heart, soul, and mind? Think about it, y'all. Think about it. With all your mind and with all your strength, Woo. that's with everything in you, right? You're loving him by keeping his commandments. You're loving him by treating others the, the way that God told you to. You're loving him, right? By forgiving. You're loving him. By not holding on to the past, not holding on to getting revenge. You're loving him by loving yourself. You're loving him by taking care of his temple, which is you. You're loving him, right? This is the first commandment. Ooh. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. There is no other commandment greater than these, right? You should love your friends. You should love your family. You should love your kids, your spouse. You should love your coworkers. No matter what goes down, what happens, show love. Gravitate to love of Christ. You know, a lot of people, they say, I know what love is. Do you really? Because I'm not talking about the type of love that you have when things are going good for you or when your boyfriend is acting right or when your girlfriend is acting right. Come on. Or when your spouse is acting right, you know what love is, right? Because the main time that they do something wrong to you, then you want to carry on and be pouting and, you know, don't know how to let go and don't know, don't, don't know how, not how to let go of the past. And you want to, you know, throw that back up in somebody's face. And no, that, that's not that, that. No, that's not the love of God, because when we ask for forgiveness, God forgives us right then and there. He does not hold the past against us like the enemy does. Can I get a witness? <laughs> yes, it's easier said than done. But you know what? That is the commandment. And that's why it's so hard to do because it's a commandment. That's Mark 12, 30 and 31. And I love this one. We're going to read one more. Matthew 5, 44 through 46. But I say to you, it may say for you to get revenge on your enemies. It may say for an eye, an eye for an eye in the word. But Christ said, but I say, me, my, I'm the new covenant. I say, we're not going with the old covenant anymore. I say to you, love your enemies. Wow. <sighs> Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. This is one of the fruit of the spirit, y'all. This is love. This is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The first one is love. That's the fruit of the Spirit. It's saying, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. I already know that part two is coming. And pray for those who spitefully use you. Who talk about you. Who use you up for your time, for your money, for your conversation, for um, what for what you have. They use you and the next thing, the only time they want to grin in your face is when you got money. The only time they want to grin in your face is when you got something to offer them. The only time they grin in your face is when they know you got something that they want. 
when they talk about you, persecute you because of your faith, persecute you because of you're not living like them, persecute you because you don't want to hit the club, persecute you, right? Mm. Say all types of spiteful things, mean things to you. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. That's how good God is. Come on. Because when we was once evil out there, before we even came to Christ, before we knew Christ, God shined on us. Come on. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? It's saying if you only love just because someone loves you, if you only love them back on, on that percep perception, what, what reward are you getting? Right? You're not just loving because out of the goodness of your heart, out of the Holy Spirit that's telling you to love, out of godly love, out of a godly love. You only love it because someone loves you and they're doing good towards you. Then you want to do good towards them. But what if they're not doing good? Are you still going to show that same type of love? Are you still going to show that same grace? He said, what reward have you? Right? The fruit of the spirit, y'all. <clears throat> fruit of the spirit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read one more. Ephesians 5, chap uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. Therefore, be imitators of God. This is saying, be like me. Copy God. Copy him. Be imitators of God as dear children. When we were little bitty children, we imitated everything our parents did. They had to be careful in whatever they did in front of us, right? They couldn't really do everything they wanted to do in front of us because we did, we were copycats. We did everything that they, everything that they did. And we see them drinking out of a cup. We want to copy. Oh, curious. Okay. Pick up a cup. Even though there's nothing in it, drink. Yeah, like we're drinking it. If they, we see they taking care of a baby, holding a baby, we get a, a play doll and, and, and act like, you know, we're feeding it. We're taking care of the baby. It's because we've seen our mom do it. We've seen our dad do it. We've seen a baby cousin do it. Okay, I want a baby too. <laughs> not really knowing that it's, it's not real, but we see, we mimic what other people do. And so Christ is saying, the Bible is saying, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Hmm. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on. Right? You have to walk worthy of the calling. Walk worthy of God's commandments. Walk worthy of the word. Amen. Wow. And that's so hard to do. That's so hard to do. But just like I said in the beginning, God, he lets us know where our fight is. You, you fight a person back with kindness. You fight a person back with love. You fight a person back with joy, peace, gentleness. You fight back with the armor of God, righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, right? You fight back with the belt of truth, truth. What's going to hold all that together? Truth. Come on. We're going to get, we're gonna get, in that, get into that tomorrow because we, we still haven't gone through all of the fruits of the spirit. Amen. Oh, my God. That's, that's, that's just so good. We have like 10 more minutes. You know, and I just, you know, it hit home for me, you know, because, oh, man, on that day, I was like, I, I'm sick of everybody. Oh, my God. I was, I got so tired. 
you know. Whew, wow. We have to keep in step of the spirit. We have to keep in step of the light. Amen. That light that leads and guides the light of the Holy Spirit. We have to keep in step of it. So I'm going to stop here because I don't want to be on here too long, you know, but I will be back in the morning. As a matter of fact, in the morning. Yes. Before my nail appointment, y'all look at my nails. They're looking busted and disgusted. <laughs> but I will. I will be back in the morning to talk about more fruits of the spirit. Amen. But I pray that this little bitty snippet um, gravitates. It gravitates you to the word. It gravitates you to Christ. It gravitates you to how we should respond. That's our responsibility. Come on, you know, hmm. it's also our responsibility by how we act as being single women. It's our responsibility by how we respond to that. Are we still responding in love, joy, peace, kindness? Sometimes we get to ourselves and we just cry and just hurt and just feel left out, you know, just because someone is getting married before you does not mean they get married instead of you. Come on. That's not how God works. Amen. So we still have to keep the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. We still have to keep that inside of us. Amen. So I'm going to pray us out of here. You know, I don't want to be on here too late. You know, and I pray that this little bit that it touches your heart. Amen, sisters. Come on. So, Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this small study. I thank you, Father God, that you are a good, good father, that you are loving, that you are merciful and it endures forever, God. We thank you, God, for the fruits of the spirit. The first one we spoke about was love. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you captivate our hearts with that love, God, and that we carry it, Lord, that heat along with it, that we carry it, Father, we carry the mandate well in the name of Jesus. And no matter what goes on, no matter how we've been treated, no matter, we, Lord, we can look to you because you are our help. You are our help, God. You are our shepherd. You lead and guide us, God, to go into the right direction when we get off course, to, to, to make sure that our path is straight and not crooked, God. You lead and guide us, God, in the right way. So we thank you right now for what you're doing, God. We thank you right now for the shifting. We thank you right now for the shaking of the atmosphere. We thank you right now, God, for speaking. We thank you, Father God for your light. We thank you, Lord, for illuminating our path, God. We thank you, Lord, that in darkness, God, we can still see in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Father God, that this love, it grows our hearts and that it grows our minds to think positively and think only of you, for you will give us perfect peace when our mind is stayed on you, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we do pray. Amen. 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 So I'll be back in the morning. You guys, you guys rest peacefully. I pray that the Lord gives you restful, that he gives you a good rest and that he, he gives you peaceful sleep and that he, in, he brings down, he calls down the angels to encamp all around you to keep you safe. No matter what goes on around you, it won't hit your home in the name of Jesus. So I thank you. And I, I pray for you. I love you. And I will see you in the morning. If God willing, I love you. Bye-bye.